Uh, today on a call with me, I'm lucky enough to be visiting with Kevin Brenneman. And Kevin has a great uh, job title. His job title is Director of Service for North America for Case IH. Now, Kevin, honestly, from a farmer's perspective, this sounds like a nightmare job. I'm glad I now have you on speed dial, but tell me a bit about what it's like to have Director of Service as your job title. Yeah, it's a it's a challenging spot to be in, Sherilyn, especially during the busy times of the year, you know, spring seeding season or fall harvesting. But uh, for a person that really loves equipment, really loves technology and, you know, hands on and, and lighting to, to diagnose and problem solve, this is the time of season where, where I thrive. And, and uh, the more activity you have, the, the days go by fast and we're able to hopefully problem solve and make customers happy at the end of the day. So that's, uh, that's what I enjoy in my, my line of work. So Kevin, one of the big issues that farmers are talking about either amongst ourselves or with the industry is this issue around right to repair. So can you share with us, you know, what what case IH's position is currently on this, you know, a bit of a controversial issue we call right to repair? Sure, sure. And I think, you know, our, our customers have always had the desire and the ability to, to service and maintain their own equipment. And I, what I think this is really being created from is the fact that over time and as our equipment has evolved, we've added a lot more features, technology, things like auto guidance, things like yield monitors. And now we're starting to you know, add automation to some of our agricultural vehicles, all to try and provide a, uh, equipment that makes our, our customers more efficient and more productive, but it, it makes them more complex. And, and so our, our customers that are used to being able to maintain and repair their equipment are, are having to the challenge of figuring out this higher level of technology. So for me, the whole right to repair conversation is about what can, can we do as, as OEM providers of agriculture equipment, help our customers learn more about the technology we've added to the vehicle and give them the tools and information they need to continue to, to be able to service and repair their equipment. You know, as farmers, the worst thing that can happen in seeding is a breakdown. The worst thing that can happen in our spraying seeding is a season is a breakdown. The worst thing that happens in harvest is a breakdown. And we're constantly worried about downtime. Downtime costs us money. It costs us you know, energy and efficiency. And, and it's the thing that we need to avoid in the middle of the season. And we are used to being able to have the expertise on the farm, whether that's a father-in-law or, you know, historically speaking, we've got people on the farm that know how to fix things. And we're not able to fix some of these problems on our own. And that creates this level of stress that we call downtime. So can you kind of talk me through what right to repair or right to modify, it's also called means for downtime and is my nervousness warranted or or can you set some of that at ease yeah downtime is is that word we're all looking to reduce avoid eliminate right back in january we released a, a product available to our customers called the the customer version of our est or electronic service tool and that contains the ability to you know, plug into the communication network of of our agricultural equipment and look at fault codes, you know, diagnose problems. It contains an electronic version of the service manual. It's very similar to the tool that our dealers use, but really uh, customized for the, the, the customer's use. And that's a, a subscription you can buy annually. Uh, it's available through our, our local Case IH dealer network. <clears throat> and it's software that's put onto a laptop. And, and the whole idea is, Let's, let's put the tools in the hands of our customers so that when they're faced with a breakdown in the middle of season, um, if, if they have the technical expertise to utilize the, the customer version of the EST, you know, give the customers a, the tools to dig into the problem, try and figure out, can you duct tape it back together in the middle of the field and keep going? Or do I need to call out the dealer and, and have them dig into it? But it, it all reduces the, the amount of downtime by putting the right tools in the, in the hands of our customers. Do you have a sense, have you gotten some feedback from farmers that are using it? Have you gotten a sense of what the uptake is of your customers? It is very new and we're just starting to, to place some of these subscriptions for the customer EST with customers. And the, the next big step is the, 
the training and the information to go with it. You know, ha having the tool is one thing, but understanding how to utilize it and uh, and how to dig into and problem solve on one of our vehicles is the next step. So a lot of our vehicles have onboard diagnostics built into them. It's really quite surprising if you know where to look on the main machine display in one of our combines or large tractors, you can see the signal from just about every sensor on the vehicle. But the challenge is knowing how to utilize that in order to identify what is happening to the vehicle and maybe what part do I need to replace. So information is, is the next step. And that's where that like customer version of the EST comes with. A, uh, a digital copy of our service manual. Um, I wanted to also ask you about kind of the start of this issue. And I would suggest, and, and I could be wrong, but I would suggest that the emissions conversation that we're having nationally and globally was likely the start of some of these right to repair issues that regulators have given us new regulations that we have to meet, new standards that we have to meet. And that's you know, it enabled the, the manufacturing of this new equipment to give us this new technology, the enforcement of that. It wasn't necessarily something that farmers asked for. I, I would argue it's definitely not something that farmers asked for. And that's kind of the, the dichotomy that we're in is it's, it's being imposed on us. The emission standards that several you know, legislative bodies have, uh, I guess, placed upon the agricultural industry did require us to add you know, a whole new system to our vehicles, right? You know, we, we have had to add a, an emissions control system to all of our large engines. And it's on top of the, the control system we use to run that engine. So it, it is a, another set of uh, equipment to maintain, equipment to service, and, and equipment that, you know, has a potential of, of a breakdown that, that we have to be able to, to diagnose and repair. In the future, I hope that there is better collaboration between the regulators and our industry. I, I think farmers have some you know, awesome suggestions of how we can make things better. And certainly equipment manufacturing have their own uh, vision about where their equipment can go in the future to meet these. And it would be my hope that we can collaborate better going forward to kind of ease some of this frustration before we're all, before it's imposed on us that we can really get behind it uh, rather than seeing it as an imposition and a costly one. I would be remiss right. if I didn't talk about the cost of, of these new standards, but my hope would be that we could have just better collaboration in general in the future when it comes to meeting new standards. Yeah, the, uh, the agriculture industry, it, it, it's different than say an engine operating on an on-road truck traveling across the country, right? You're, you're out in the yes. field, you're out harvesting, it's dusty, it's dirty. And you know we've had to catch up with these emission standards as quickly as possible, and we've used a lot of the same same parts, same components that have come from the on-road industry because they had to meet those emissions first. And you're you're right. Now is the time to try and customize you know what we do to our agricultural equipment to fit the agricultural market and the application, the different applications we run in with harvesting, planting, and seeding.